Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Handler. I'm a solutions architect with AWS. <laughs> I'm going to be joined today uh, by Fred Kerwin from 3M Healthcare. And I'm going to be joined also by Krishna Venkatachalam uh, from Dow Jones. So today, I'm, I'm really pleased to be here to talk to you about a subject that I'm quite passionate about, and that is search. Um, to me, search is a magical thing where you go to a website, you go to uh, you know, a, a document set, and you're able to find that one piece of information that is critical to you executing your task. And actually, search engines are what provide that capability, can trace their roots back to library science. So if you think about it, librarians had enormous catalogs of books that they had to make available to people who came in who had needs for that information. And it wasn't even just they needed to match the title, they needed to do it in categories, they needed to do it with the content and the semantics of what was in those books. So probably right now you're saying, well, what are you doing talking to me about library science? Fair enough. Actually, you can trace a path from library science all the way through to what we do with big data, and especially to the topic that we're talking about, which is observability. Because that same thing, we have that enormous pile of information, and somewhere in there is that golden needle in the silver haystack that's gonna give you the information that you need to progress in your task. Search engines live in the databases world. They store data. They support both structured and unstructured format. So they have language-aware capabilities for decomposing text and bringing that into a matching uh, scenario. They can match values in combinations. But opposed to other database solutions, a search engine has a notion of better. It's that library use case. It's trying to bring you the best matches. Other database solutions will bring you all of the matches, where search engines bring the best. Um, but while they store data, they're really built for low latency, uh, high throughput processing. So we're all familiar with search experience. I'll just go through it a bit. Search engines match terms to catalogs. In this case, uh, e-commerce solution. I type search engines. I get books about search engines. Now, you may see in the left side there what are called search facets. These facets summarize values across the result set. And this faceted navigation actually makes it easier for you to specify your query by saying, hey, I want to drill in to this particular value. But in the history of search engines, facets actually started to expand um, because, again, it's a summarization over a column of the information that's in the result set. So 10, 15 years ago, I'm making this story up, somebody decided, I have 10,000 servers, I have a lot of server logs, I need to find where the error was, let me stick it in a search engine, right? And because they were taking their log data and putting it in a search engine, and with the capability of walking the column of data, like a CPU utilization, the search engine was able to support a visualization layer that enabled a very near real-time view of what was going on. So Elasticsearch first, OpenSearch now, really brought this use case to the fore, the ability to take in high volumes of log data, summarize, and build visualizations. Now, we're pushing even further. In our modern applications, we now no longer have monoliths. So our applications are now compositions of microservices. And in fact, they're, they're, uh, your visibility can be pretty low. When something happens, you've got these thousands and thousands of containers running. And how do you know what went wrong, where it went wrong? Was it a code bug, a service API failure? Was it a cloud service failure? All of these different um, elements or entities are having interactions, and you need to be able to bring them together in a way that you can visualize and figure out what's going on. So 
This is a, a kind of standard logging case where even at the component level, you're able to generate and send logs uh, to open search. But in addition, we've now developed a, a specialized kind of logging format called tracing, where a trace is a hierarchical view of the individual component processing and interactions. And so with this more detailed view, you're actually easier able to remediate failures and um, fix, fix what's going on. So Open Search and Amazon Open Search Service uh, provide you this tool that enables you to go find those pieces of information that you need. Open Search is a community-driven open source project comprising Open Search, a search and analytics engine, Open Search dashboards, a visualization UI that enables you to monitor in near real time, as well as a suite of tools and plugins that provide capabilities like alerting, anomaly detection, security, and a whole host of other uh, capabilities, observability as well. With Amazon Open Search Service, you can run Open Search in the AWS cloud, and it makes it easy to scale, deploy, manage, and run. Talking a little bit about the Open Search project, um, we have some nice numbers, 100 million downloads. It's in the DB Engine's uh, website. It's the top in the top four. We, the project has 40 partners, and that's growing. 10,000 pull requests, 200% uh, growth, multiple service providers, AWS, Oracle, and multiple clouds as well. So the Open Search project provides a means for the community to take and work with this uh, code base and to improve and, and uh, go on with it. So I mentioned observability as a plugin within uh, Open Search. With observability, we have a number of different components and a number of different views that enable you to dig in and dig into the logs as we talked about. Uh, specifically, we have trace analytics. This gives you capabilities to view those traces to view the individual components and interactive interactions, uh, and to bring them even to the logs. Uh, we have an APM, so an application analytics panel, that lets you collect services into a logical application to be able to monitor it from, from that perspective. We have log monitoring and event analytics that, again, allow you to flow easily between log lines, uh, error codes, and the logs and services that generate them. And we finally have metrics analytics, uh, some in the uh, open search dashboards right now, um, and some coming through the open source project. Uh, in, open in open search, open source uh, 2.4, we do uh, support a connection to Prometheus, and that it will enable you to have your metric store and your log store in different places. So just, again, to give you an idea, how does it work? Um, again, it's a database solution, sits in the database world, so the interaction should be very familiar. Uh, we have our two core workloads, our search workloads and our logs workloads. For search workloads, you're going to flow your catalog data into Open Search. Uh, Open Search is a REST-based solution. You'll format as JSON and send that data in. For the logging work workloads, you have your server logs, your application logs, AWS uh, service logs. All of those, again, you're going to flow uh, into Open Search. All of the JSON is indexed and available for query. And then on the query side, uh, either your application is going to query for your search results, or your DevOps folks, your IT folks are going to build dashboards to monitor in near real time uh, your application, your infrastructure, what have you. So when you use Open Search, um, now we have two flavors. Uh, so the first of those is provisioned. So with Amazon Open Search Service provisioned, you create a domain. A domain is a collection of hardware and software that delivers Open Search to you at an endpoint where you interact with the JSON uh, REST API. Open Search is a distributed database, and it runs on a number of nodes that have different roles. You have data nodes. The data nodes, anybody guess? hold the data, 
and perform indexing and query processing. Um, they also, that's where your security is applied, uh, fine-grained access control down to the field level. We also have a feature called UltraWarm. UltraWarm for a logs workload enables you to move older log data into S3 backed storage to reduce your cost. And it can be quite dramatic, uh, reducing your cost in the 50 to 80% range for that older data. Now you trade off latency for cost in that case. Uh, you have cluster manager nodes. These are like Zookeeper nodes. They keep the cluster together. It's all fronted by load balancing. And for, um, for dashboards access, we support SAML, uh, Cognito, IAM access, and logins uh, to give you that authenticated entity and that fine-grained access control. A number of different integrations uh, inbound. We support Kinesis Data Firehose. We support AWS Database Migration Service uh, directly. And we support CloudWatch Logs and MSK a little bit, uh, with a little bit of help from Lambda. On the outbound side, we send metrics to CloudWatch and CloudTrail. But of course, we have our open search serverless uh, coming out now in preview. And I'm happy to announce, or not really announce, I'm happy to say we now have it in uh, preview. If you think about the prior diagram, you would specify for us the, the hardware that you wanted to run, and then we would go and deploy it. But you, you needed quite a bit of specialized knowledge and uh, a little bit of work to make sure that things were running right. And across the board, it's a complicated problem. And we love to solve complicated problems for our customers. So uh, with serverless, the number one thing is it's easy to administer. You no longer have to think about what instances you're running, what indexes you have, how your shards are laid out. All of that is done for you. We have, uh, as a core innovation, separated storage from compute. So with serverless, we're entirely backed by S3 storage. And you can see we've also separated the indexing capabilities from the search capabilities. We separately scale the compute needed for each of those tasks. On the indexing side, we're going to take in that data, it's going to build indices, and it's going to send them off to S3. On the query side, it's going to read back that data from S3 and then bring that to those local hot nodes for query. We have two different flavors, logs and search. For the search workloads, we're going to keep all that data hot. In a search workload, mostly you want to have a very fast query response time. For logs, we're going to enable on-demand, sort of like how we run UltraWarm, to bring that data into memory. So the cost structure improves a little bit through that mediating through S3. With serverless, we have exactly the same API set that you have with open source, open search, and with open search service provisioned. Um, you'll just use exactly the clients, the API calls, and everything that you've, that you've already been using. And again, we have some cost efficiencies that enable you to pay only for what you consume. I encourage you all to attend the breakout tomorrow. Uh, that's, I'm not going to go much deeper in detail, apologies. But uh, tomorrow we have Ant 221. Uh, that is in the Lido 3003 here at the Venetian. So I encourage everybody to go check it out. You'll get some really great details from that session. So I'm going to wrap my section here and just bring you back to the thought of the librarians and the catalog and finding that golden needle in that silver needle haystack. Whether you're doing search to enable your users to find the right content, or you're doing logs to do observability across your application infrastructure, your security, et cetera, open search is the tool that enables you, again, to find that information you need to remediate problems, uh, discover, diagnose, and bring your system into health. So I'm going to bring up uh, Fred Kerwin from 3M Healthcare Business Group. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, John. Is everyone good and tired today? I know I am. Uh, 
Good afternoon. My name is Fred Kerwin. As John mentioned kindly, uh, I'm from 3M Healthcare. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with 3M, even though you may not realize it. You may be wearing or interacting with one of our products right now. If you're wearing a mask, PPE is something we produce. If you're wearing a Band-Aid, the Next Care brand is something we produce. The air filters above us, something we produce. Um, uh, adhesives under the Scotch brand, you know, a huge product catalog of over 60,000 products. Uh, my team specifically reports up in through the healthcare business group, which is comprised of medical, oral care, separation, purification sciences, and health information systems, of course. We primarily operate, uh, you know, most of our customers are within the health information systems. Uh, our team uses open search as like the keystone technology of, of our observability efforts. Uh, we were an elk shop for a very long time and wanted to keep it in the open source community. Um, so, you know, seven years ago we started with elk and now we're using open search and some of the associated tools. <clears throat> but we aren't the only team at 3M using open search. Um, other teams, for example, uh, produce healthcare data dictionaries, which require that low latency search that John had mentioned earlier. <clears throat> so, Project Astrolabe, that is the code word dubbed for uh, the observability upgrade or maybe the observability evolution or uh, who knows, maybe observability is just a marketing term someone dreamed up to make some cash, I don't know. But Project Astrolabe is the name of the project that we're working on now to enhance our observability capabilities and it's largely built on top of our existing open search infrastructure. <clears throat> There's really three key goals for this project. The first is to empower incident response. Um, if you've ever talked to my boss's boss, he will say, you do not want to get the three o'clock in the morning Christmas call and be on the hook for something that you don't know what's going on under the hood. No one wants to get that call. So empowering incident response and helping our folks on the front line diagnose issues with their application is really the core goal of this effort. And that's something you know, we're looking to support at the highest level. <clears throat> we want people to be able to easily diagnose issues when the stakes are super high, maybe they're tired, and they're definitely stressed out. <clears throat> uh, this involves you know, quite a few capabilities, which again, as John mentioned, uh, open, source open search readily provides, such as alerting, dashboards, search of course, reporting, and other types of monitoring. Um, interestingly enough, observability is also, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's, a, it's a, a, a global problem. It's a problem for organizations. It's not just a technology problem. So this spans teams, other services, and a variety of other domains that kind of make the getting everything together very difficult. So why is this important? Well, clearly, uh, for customer satisfaction. No one wants to use an app that's down, where you can't use an app that's down. No one wants to buy a product that keeps going down. Uh, critically also, there's bottom line implications in meeting your SLA agreements with your clients. The second uh, key capability that we're you know, really looking to foster is to enhance product delivery. So what that means is we're looking to allow stakeholders to analyze their system behavior, uh, hopefully before it gets to be a problem, but in such like a QA environment, uh, so that they can design better systems. So enhancing product delivery may answer the following questions. System baselining. How are things performing in QA on the recent push I just did? Um, how does my system perform? What SLOs can I possibly offer based on the latency of my instrumented applications? Service mapping. Who's using my service? How is it performing? Am I annoying my customers? Which services am I using? Who do I need to email to tell them that, hey, things are not going so well, maybe we should get together and talk about the documentation. I think I'm, I'm using things incorrectly here. Why is this important? Better knowledge, faster delivery, and better designs, right? This knowledge production allows people to view things in ways that maybe they hadn't realized before. For example, I was just working with a team who's working with Kafka and have, had some auto instrumentation with open telemetry, and they didn't realize that you know, they were pulling so many messages off out of the topic. If you look at their service map, it was like huge. Really surprised everyone. Um, so even though they had coded it and were working it for, for a long time, they didn't even realize that. Um, and finally, also a, a better developer experience, right? So again, you may not realize something was wrong, you're happy to be able to figure out what is wrong. Finally, we're looking to improve interoperability. So we're looking to provide a single source of truth, or I'm sure you've heard the phrase, single pane of glass over and over and over again, along with the observability mantras, um, that allows everyone to have deep insight into our observability efforts, but also our operational activities. 
So core observability is, you know, per the open telemetry documentation is metrics, lace, metrics traces, and logs. Um, but we're also looking to implement analysis on DORA metrics such as MTTR, uh, deployment information, as that's usually a good indicator that that was actually what went wrong and, and you're, that's why you're on the call right now. And cost data to do things like, you know, cost per transaction, which everyone, especially in management uh, and FinOps, really wants to know. <clears throat> um, we want to provide the data over time. Uh, it, depending on who you ask, whether that's management or developers, there's a, there's a recency bias, and we want to be able to take the, the observability data we have, roll it up, and be able to report on it over time without having to do any additional coding or data pipelines or instrumentation. Um, we want to leverage semantic standards so everyone speaks the same language, and we want to integrate data sources, which kind of ties into some of the other things with cost and uh, DORA metrics. Uh, why is this important? It provides better accountability for the organization and, um, well, makes your manager happy, so why not do it? Okay, so uh, here is an extremely slimmed down version of um, our architecture as it's evolving. Uh, actually, currently in production, we use a lot of other services such as Kinesis Firehose to uh, put data into open search service. Um, but I wanted to focus on the open source stuff because that's really been my focus since I've been at 3M. <clears throat> really, there's four key tenants within our architecture, as you'll see here. Um, we want to leverage AWS managed services as much as possible for obvious reasons. We want to leverage open source as much as possible. Uh, we want to remain cost conscious, which I suppose is related uh, to the first two items, right? Because open source certainly makes it easier to remain cost conscious. And managed services certainly can help you lower the TCO of your operations, especially around um, staffing. <laughs> uh, and we want to allow for much flexibility as possible. So this is flexibility uh, from a lot of angles, right? Where can we deploy our services? Where can we deploy our observability stack? We've had to operate in places that AWS wasn't available for whatever reason. Can we deploy it there? What kind of tools can we use? Do they play nice with each other? And you know, what kind of data use cases can we offer our clients so that we can serve them in the best way possible? So some key takeaways uh, may not be obvious, but uh, I'm sure if you've been working on observability, uh, these will be obvious to you. Open source is great, even when some of the tools are not fully complete. Um, we use open telemetry, or we're, we're beginning to use open telemetry for our uh, service instrumentation and data processing through the open telemetry collector. Uh, data prepper for data ingestion helps you buffer the data and process it using standard rules. Uh, open search, obviously, no need to beat that dead horse. Uh, Jaeger for uh, trace ingestion and trace analysis. And Grafana for dashboards alerting, querying, and reporting. <clears throat> Managed open source is like the, the next level up. And I suppose uh, serverless, serverless managed open source would be like the penultimate uh, expression of all this. And we want to unload our operational burden, again, for obvious reasons. <clears throat> open search is great for a lot of reasons. As John mentioned, we have multiple access controls with fine-grained access where and when we need it, right? You can use resource-based policies. We use SAML authentication for our dashboards and basic auth if absolutely necessary. It's got outstanding search capabilities with Textual data such as logs or traces is, is absolutely necessary. And data prepper allows us to ingest and buffer the data and securely get it to open search very easily with a standard set of rules and a standard set of tools so that we don't need to code you know, custom software or routines. <clears throat> the data is customizable. JSON documents, uh, you, there's no need if you're kind of a legacy uh, data developer or, or data warehouse architect to do a six month review of a, of a schema change somewhere. You know, we can, we can allow our clients to kind of send us things as and when they need it as opposed to, you know, getting in their way. Um, ultra warm storage provides us a lot of cost savings, even though sometimes at the expense of performance. Um, we use index management quite a bit to roll over the indices under certain conditions reduce the number of replicas to free up some more resources, and to obviously age the data out of the system as it becomes less and less relevant over time, or even roll it up so that we can do that other set of reporting I had mentioned earlier. <clears throat> um, open search is easy to use with Grafana, very simple, um, plays nice with it. Same thing with Jaeger. We actually persist the traces in, in open search from Jaeger, extremely easy to set up, and the documentation is very good. Uh, 
something that probably goes without saying again if you've been on AWS for a while, um, which I presume you are since you're here, is that the AWS support is excellent and it's really great for our team to be able to get in the ear of the TAM and say, hey, we want some features. Can you get us in with the product team? And then we talk to the product team and a couple months later we have a solution. It's like having a whole team of developers for free. Well, not for free, but eh, not, <laughs> not on my boss. <laughs> um, so uh, and one final thing, uh, we really like the technology. We've used it for a while. We've developed expertise on it. And uh, Bruce Lee once said, I fear the man who has practiced one punch 10,000 times as opposed to the man who has practiced 10,000 punches one time. Same logic applies. We want to be really good at using open search for our capabilities. And it is that single punch or kick that pr provides the capabilities that we need to help our clients best serve them. <clears throat> success metrics. Um, these can be a little tricky to define here, but our customer success metrics are largely our success metrics, right? So in terms of incidents response, we want to see downward trending MTTR for clients if possible. We want to see upward trending service availability. You know, if they're using our observability stack, you know, hopefully we can help them achieve those goals. In enhancing product delivery, we'd like some downward trending change fail rates for clients as they, you know, work to deploy their assets uh, with a little more knowledge. Uh, downward trending major, major outages and, you know, downward trending response time for their apps, maybe your RESTful service you'd like to get from 400 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. <clears throat> In terms of improving interoperability, it's uh, very key that we bring on new clients, you know, particularly for tracing, right? Uh, tracing benefits greatly from positive network effects. The more applications that you've instrumented, the more powerful and the more insight that you have, right? Um, if you've only traced a, uh, instrumented one application, you can actually see that the trace goes into a black hole, even if it's a service that you, the guy sitting next to you is working on. Uh, so we're really trying to bring on roughly one client per month if possible, uh, more is fine as well. Internally, we try and get uh, as close to the open search SLA as possible of three nines, and we use automated uh, snapshots for our RPO objectives. So I'm going to get a drink really quick because my throat is dry. Who would think that the desert would be hot and dry, huh? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so here's a success story. I'm sorry to report that there is no fancy ML algorithms, there is no fancy AI, or really any other buzzwords in this one. Uh, but I am happy to report this is something extremely easy that if you're using OpenSearch, you can literally implement today with very little effort. Engineers with very little knowledge of OpenSearch could read the documentation and also implement it um, if you have a way to, for them to deploy uh, alerts on OpenSearch. <clears throat> We're able to avert a mini disaster on our authentication service, which is obviously central to all applications. Uh, this service is actually owned by my team, but they're also a client of centralized observability. <clears throat> uh, our open search alerts tend to send us emails with some color commentary in the form of a table or an attachment or a link, uh, which we're able to use in going to search and figure out what went wrong. So uh, we got an alert that the certificate creation volume for this service was you know, much higher than normal, much, much higher than normal. Uh, the issue didn't seem to impact production yet, or at least people hadn't started complaining about it yet. So who knows what direction that really went. But I'm going to go with it hadn't impacted it yet. Uh, we were able to search the logs to find the offending application very quickly based on the alert that was sent, reach out to the team, take that same query, build a quick dashboard with it, share it with them, have them log in, see it, verify everything was going not well, um, see where it was deployed, and begin our mediation efforts. So the result was pretty simple. We avoided you know, severe performance degradation, and not only on that app, but probably across a lot of other apps. And not only that, we were able to go in and clean up the erroneously created certificates and all the data associated with it. So the day was saved. <clears throat> challenges. Um, so John asked us to uh, maybe talk about some of the challenges in implementing all this. And uh, there are a lot of them. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just about the technical challenge. There's a lot of other challenges organizationally, dealing with engineers who say, I don't want to instrument my code, uh, yada, 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 you're getting in my way, this is going to be slow, the packages are too big, blah, 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 blah. So uh, migration to Astrolabe, which is an ongoing process for us. Um, we're using OpenTelemetry for instrumentation, as I had mentioned. 
It's very nascent. It's in the early stages. You're not even getting logs out of it yet, which is good because you know, we're able to rely on our old solution for that. But yeah, are these libraries going to work? Are they going to change in weird ways that are going to break things? It's definitely a concern. Um, do we want to create shims around these libraries? Or do we want to allow the teams to kind of go and experiment themselves and maybe a more little Wild West approach? Um, the documentation for open telemetry is excellent. So you know, that's not such a far-fetched idea. Um, how, will, how did the Elasticsearch to OpenSearch transition go? How will the OpenSearch to OpenSearch Plus transition go? Will our home rolled libraries and log stash that we were using for a while play nicely with open telemetry? Um, you know, how, are, how is that transition going to go? Uh, solutions, there's a lot of them. Uh, it's extremely painful to go through all the docs. You got Zipkin, Jaeger, Tempo, OpenSearch, Grafana, uh, vendors, uh, the, the list goes on and on. So there's really no shortage of solutions. Uh, which one do we use? Do we have enough time to thoughtfully research all of these and put forward a solution that people won't hate us for? You know, it's, there's a little bit of pressure there. Uh, how do we collect data? Do we want to use FluentBit? Do we want to use the Hotel Collector? Do we want to allow people to directly instrument their code and just send us stuff? Um, there's a lot to figure out there. What is CloudWatch's role in all this? Uh, many, many different uh, things to think about. Uh, for 3M Healthcare, uh, predictably, there's sensitive data. So there's a persistent threat that someone's going to accidentally log something very naughty, and then we're going to put it in our database in OpenSearch, and we're going to be on the hook for it. So that, that's the type of stuff that could keep you up at night. <clears throat> we do global deployments. We service people around the globe. 3 is a very big company. Health information systems services people around the globe. We have to do deployments everywhere across different accounts. Um, different regions. Some of these regions have extremely strict data locality requirements. You know, so we're not taking data from Germany and sending it to, to America. You know, that, that data needs to reside there. Uh, evolution. Again, this kind of ties in with the, some of the migration questions we had. All this stuff is evolving. Some of the docs are, are pretty good. Some are pretty bad. You know, what is the future of these projects? Uh, data sources. They're innumerable. Containers, serverless, uh, databases. You have code, you have metrics, you have metrics based on traces, you have all this different stuff. Gathering all that and centralizing it is a huge effort. Uh, expertise, uh, it's final, uh, final challenge. Finding people that can you know, operate the infrastructure at scale, even with the help of managed services, is extremely difficult. You know, this project crosses a lot of different functional and technical domains, right? There's elements of data engineering and information architecture, you know, setting up these databases, making sure that your index indices are performant enough to actually serve your customers. There's elements of software engineering. Sometimes we write our own code in order to provide functionality that maybe one of the open, open source libraries doesn't provide, or maybe we're doing an enhancement, or maybe we're just doing some good old-fashioned ETL and putting stuff somewhere so that somebody else can see it. Uh, DevOps, right? We have to deploy and manage this infrastructure. Huge challenge even with you know, some of the tools provided to us by our internal teams, which are excellent. And SysOps, how do we get you know, all this stuff out there and monitor it ourselves to you know, observe the observability? Um, hugely challenging. So that concludes my section of the presentation. Thanks for coming. Um, coming up next is uh, Krishna from Dow Jones, and he's going to talk to you about their efforts in observability. Hey, thanks, Fred. Good afternoon, guys. Hope uh, you guys are having a good reinvent. Uh, so before we jump into the uh, uh, my presentation about the uh, open search, our journey with the open search, I want to quickly talk a few minutes about Dow Jones. So Dow Jones is a subsidiary of News Corporation. It's a leading provider of business news and information services. It's been in the news business for the last 140 years. Uh, we are newspapers, newsletters, magazines, websites, feeds, uh, databases, and videos, and much more. So we have two complementary businesses in Dow Jones. Uh, the financial news publications, which is uh, run by our B2C business, and they published the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, and the Market Watch. The second division is the B2B division. That's where I belong to. And all the presentation which I'm going to talk about is with the B2B division. And they have three main products, Factiva, Risk and Compliance, and Newswires. 
So Factiva is an online news aggregation uh, platform which provides business information and research tool to analysts, librarians, research analysts, communication professionals. It has a huge database of more than 30,000 sources in 33 languages and the archive spans over a period of 30 years. So you can imagine the depth of the data they have. The second one is the risk and compliance business, which provides data solutions, web-based tool, and due diligence services to mitigate the regulatory uh, and the reputational risks. It helps the compliance professionals navigate the risk landscape across the financial cram, sanctions, uh, things with international trade, corruption. It's one of our fastest growing business within Dow Jones. Then the newswire, newswires, which provides ultra fast market moving news to financial firms, professionals, and investors. So Dow Jones, traditionally a content company, is now transforming into a technology company. So we continually develop technology to transform information into insight and prosperity. So I'm going to talk about our observability journey, uh, how we started, what were our challenges, and then I'm going to talk about the benefits of migrating to open search and other open source products. So for years, we utilized third-party tools for monitoring our application via logs and traces. Right? And this presented us with a lot of challenges, and I've listed a few of them here. The first one is it was centrally managed and inflexible. In our case, the third-party tool was managed by a central team at our parent organization level. And any configuration changes or alert creation had to go, go through the small bottleneck team. And that was limiting our speed of deployment and the flexibility to do, configure things to our needs. Right? We had strict uh, quotas on storage and queries. Right? Uh, it was strictly managed. And what happened is as our systems expanded, we had to constantly revisit our strategy to stay within the budget and the platform capacity. The third thing was uh, underutilized uh, capabilities of the commercial software. So the vendors we were using had a lot of advanced features, but we realized we were only using 20% of that, those features, and we were paying a premium for the features we were not using. So if you look at the combination of whether you want to store less versus you want to use the uh, advanced features of commercial software, we went back to our users and we asked them, do you want to store more data, run more queries, or do you really want to have these advanced features which you may or may not use in the future? So overwhelmingly, all the users came back and said, no, we want to store more data, we want to run more queries. The other thing is the vendor locking. So by using the vendor-specific libraries and agents for creating log aggregation, uh, that actually created a vendor lock-in. And it limited our ability to uh, evolve and innovate um, outside that vendor. Right? And then data isolation. Once the data had gone to that vendor, uh, it was very difficult and expensive to interact with data. If you wanted to take that data and send it for advanced analytics, it was not easy. So these were some of the challenges when we are using a third-party tool for monitoring and uh, our logs and uh, through our logs and traces. So I'm going to talk about our transformation um, and our journey into uh, open search. So over the last few years, we have migrated to a number of open source uh, observability tools, many of which were provided by AWS via the AWS managed services. So we have migrated to AWS managed open source service for log analytics, tracing, and for uh, monitoring and alerting. In addition, we built our own observability aggregation platform 
utilizing a combination of open source components like FluentD and AWS services like Kinesis Streams. And we also developed our own grown, homegrown components, uh, the DJ Dow Jones event bus to build this uh, uh, aggregation framework. So by building this, what were the benefits we got? So first thing is we were able to self-manage our open search configuration in each of our environment, and we were able to quickly deploy it in six regions. Now we are able to configure our indexes and alerting rules to meet our specific requirements. Observability at scale. So previously we were uh, ingesting few hundred gigabytes of data and, at a, and querying it at a slower speed. As compared to now, we are loading in uh, tens of terabytes of data at some sub-second performance and at a significantly, significantly lower budget. So it's been, a, uh, it's been a very good transition for us in that front. Uh, then coming to open source. So we are uh, Dow Jones, we are, we are Dow Jones are a big open source shop. We believe that in many areas, the open search community uh, can satisfy our requirements more than the third party tools. Uh, with the help of the uh, open search community. Right? Um, for our rapidly changing engineering needs, we think the open search might be a right fit in many areas. As well, uh, AWS was committing a significant efforts to advance the open search service via the open search community. And examples of advancements uh, from AWS, which we are starting to use, are PPL, active tracing, uh, anomaly detection, and uh, we are all we are very excited now with the serverless uh, open search. Right. So, and the other thing is, um, we are a big open source shop, and you must be wondering, do we uh, do we contribute to the open search uh, project? So, we don't directly contribute to the open search project but we are able to do it through AWS. AWS is, is very good at listening to their customers. So we are able to shape the product through the requirements we pass it through AWS. Uh, vendor neutrality, neutrality uh, by building our own data processing pipeline using the open source and managed services and our own homegrown components, we have, we have avoided the vendor lock-in. Uh, if tomorrow AWS or the open search community comes up with a better alternative to open source, then we could easily route our logs to the new product. And then we could actually, you will see in my architectural diagram that we could run both of the systems parallelly during the evaluation stage and then decide, and if you want to switch, we could always switch to the new product. Then coming to the data mobility, with our, with our uh, new architectural framework, we have the ability to send the data where we want. So if we decide we want to send it to a different system where we want to do advanced analytics, we have that freedom to do it. So we are no more stuck with the uh, data mobility issue. Next, I'm going to talk about our architecture uh, for the application logs, which we built. So the, everything you see in blue is the homegrown component built by Dow Jones. So on the left side, you see our applications. So 80% of our applications are in .NET or Java or Node.js. Node so we build uh, components for those applications which actually take the log uh, and then use gRPC and take those logs and pass it to our event bus agent. And for our legacy applications, uh, we use FluentD for log tailing. And you can see the type of logs we are sending uh, through this architecture is the application logs, the results from the syn synthetics. We have platform trace messages, which we built, which has the detailed uh, uh, request and response in this, uh, in this trace messages, which also passes through this platform. Then we have the Jen Jenkins and Spinnaker logs, and if we generate any alerts, 
those alerts are also uh, passed through this architecture and it goes to the open search service. And so you can see all these logs coming into one area gives us a good way to query them and then correlate them. Right? So once the data gets into the event bus agent, then we use the Kinesis producer library uh, to transfer it to Kinesis data streams. And from there, uh, event bus handler reads from the Kinesis data streams using the, the, the Kinesis consumer library. And now the event bus handler decides where should it send the logs to, right? And we have, as you can see, we have three log processors here. And the event bus handler knows, okay, application logs need to go to the open search service, so it will send it to the open search service. So now the, the good part about this architecture and the abstraction like you see here is, if we want to send the data to, say, the open search service and to CloudWatch, we could do the configuration on the event bus handler and send, say, send the data to both the systems. We could evaluate both the systems. And then we could say that, OK, we would like to go with open search service and then stop sending it to the CloudWatch. So and then um, as you see, we send some logs to S3, we send some to CloudWatch, but most of the logs do go to open search service. And then you have the open search job scheduler, which uh, on a scheduled basis, runs queries on the open search service. Uh, for example, looking for some alert codes, uh, some issues, and then it will talk to our custom alert manager, which then will communicate with the teams via Slack, email, SMS. And then we also use open search dashboards and Grafana to, to interact with the data which we have it in the open search service. So next is the, uh, for tracing. So we did look at multiple uh, open source uh, uh, tools available for tracing. And then finally, we decided to go with the open telemetry. And as, as you can see on the left side is all the applications uh, running the open telemetry library components. Uh, they, they collect the data the traces, and they send it to the telemetry agent. The telemetry agent lives very close to the open telemetry library. And all these agents then collect that data and send it to the uh, open telemetry collector, which will take it, batch it, uh, sample it, and then will forward this data onto the open search service, uh, to the data prepper. It has to go through the data prepper, prepper before it gets to open search. So the open telemetry sends the data in the open telemetry format to the, open, to the data prepper. Data prepper will take this data convert it into the open search format, and then send it to the open search. And once it gets to open search service, then we have number of dashboards built in, which will go and query that. And you know how the tracing works. You could see the span and, um, and visualize the data. So this is a uh, quick, uh, I just wanted to show how a deployment of our uh, open search service looks. Uh, in one region, and as you can see, this is how we deploy. We have uh, we have three availability zones, and we we deploy a three leader and data nodes into these three AZs, and we have one replica setup. Uh, we also have enabled ultra warm storage for infrequently used data. We have SAML enabled to talk to the systems. Uh, it's fully secured. We have HTTPS and encryption at rest. We have auto-tune enabled on this uh, cluster. And we also take hourly snapshots for, uh, for our DR purposes. So just wanted to give a quick idea of how, how the deployment looks. OK. So wanted to talk about some of the success uh, metrics due to this transformation. Right? Um, like I talked first, we were first ingesting uh, gigabytes of data, now we are ingesting terabytes of data at lower cost. And it's growing. We have more and more applications coming in, and we are loading more data into our system. Next is uh, we have reduced our MTTR uh, with this transformation. Um, I don't have the exact numbers to say that how much we are reduced, but my approximation is around 20% we have reduced our mean time to resolution. Uh, there has been cases where we have identified the issues before it has impacted our customers. 
uh, we were able to contain the bla blast radius. Uh, so it's been really helpful. The amount of queries we have running, um, it's, it, it's been um, uh, really uh, able to identify issues uh, even before it becomes a larger issue. Right? Uh, the other thing is we have now an improved SLO. Now, using these logs, we are able to query the logs and then figure out our SLI, right? the KPIs with the SLI. And now we know uh, what kind of SLIs we have, and based on that, we are able to improve our SLOs. Um, and then we enabled ultra-warm storage a few months back, and we saw 50% cost savings. Uh, we were storing 30 days of data. We, re we realized we don't need that much data. We enabled ultra-warm storage. Now we have seven days of hot storage, and rest all go to the ultra-warm storage. Uh, we started off with few applications, and now we have more than 50 applications supported and more to go. Um, and we have, like I mentioned, we, uh, we support six regions now, uh, and we are looking at so adding more regions to this too. So I just wanted to quickly show uh, some of the dashboard examples we have, we have developed for our users and uh, how they are using. So this is one of our application. This shows the top 10 uh, APIs by usage. It also shows the top 10 accounts by usage. It shows the top 10 errors and the top 10 slow running transactions. So we have hundreds of dashboards this way we created for our users, and they're able to, in a snapshot, see how their APIs or their transactions are doing. Right. The other example is uh, for a single particular API, and this shows the availability. And now this availability comes up, comes from, uh, from the data we collected from synthetics. So the synthetic results goes into open, open, uh, uh, open dashboard, I mean open search, and then we are able to figure out the availability based on that data. And then it also shows the account usage, usage for that API and the total number of requests received, stuff like that. So uh, I think one, one is having a lot of data ingesting, and the other thing is the, having the ability to take this data and then visualize it and then share it with the users so that they can take their decisions. So that's it for my presentation. Um, thank you.